The basic life cycle of most coral reef fish includes two major phases, demersal and planktonic. The more well-known of these is the demersal phase, where the fish lives closely associated with the substrate on a coral reef or in a mangrove bed. Demersal means near to the bottom. This is a school of Caribbean rainbow parrotfish, Scara squacamare. The rainbow parrotfish has a complex life cycle that is accompanied by a series of colour changes called polychromatism. Like most other parrotfish species, they are sequential hermaphrodites, which means that they start their life as females and eventually change into males. The female initial phase seen here is usually a plain and dull coloration, while the male terminal phase is often vividly bright with intricate patterns. Most parrotfish species form harems where a single male presides over a group of females. Rainbow parrotfish are pelagic broadcast spawners, which means that they release their eggs and sperm together high into the water column, towards the surface and away from the reef, and this helps avoid the many predators that dwell there and would prey upon their newly fertilised eggs. Spawning often occurs during the late afternoon or early evening on an outgoing tide, so the eggs are quickly transported away from the reef and into the relative safety of the open ocean, where there are fewer predators. Once out in the open ocean, the newly hatched juvenile parrotfish enter the planktonic phase of their life cycle. Larval parrotfish now become a part of the plankton, which includes a diverse group of organisms living in the surface of the water column, carried by ocean currents, and usually with limited swimming capability. Plankton is a crucial source of food for large marine animals and is composed of drifting animals, algae and bacteria. Although many planktonic species are microscopic in size, there are organisms of a wide range of sizes overall. Here we see a larval parrotfish amongst the plankton. When she first hatches, the larva has a yolk sac which provides her with food for the first few days of her life. When her yolk sac is depleted, the larva begins to feed on other plankton that are smaller than herself, such as diatoms, dinoflagellates, and copepods. However, while she is small, the larva is very vulnerable to predation, and larval mortality in this phase is extremely high. The parrotfish larva must avoid everything that is bigger than her, which is a lot of organisms. This includes jellyfish, ketonaths, and larval crabs. The parrotfish larva has good vision and the ability to detect cues from predators, which helps her to survive. The planktonic larval phase of parrotfish and most other reef fish lasts between 30 and 90 days. During this time, they have little but some control over the direction of their movement. They can move between ocean currents that vary with depth, tides and location. And as their larval phase draws to an end, they begin to search for suitable habitat on which to settle or recruit. The rainbow parrotfish, like many other reef fish, do not settle on the reef straight away. The reef is a very dangerous place for juvenile fish, full of many predators that would make an easy meal of them. Instead, parrotfish larvae settle first in a nursery habitat, and for this they use the mangrove forest. Here she undergoes a rapid transformation, taking on the familiar appearance of a small adult. In amongst the roots of the mangroves, she can find plenty of food and there are lots of hiding places where she can avoid potential predators, such as juvenile barracuda. Once she has grown larger, the juvenile parrotfish will begin to make her way out of the mangroves towards the coral reef. Along the way, she may utilise the cover of seagrass beds so that she is not exposed to predators. She's still very vulnerable, of course, because she's still quite small. Once she makes it to the reef, our small parrotfish will find a good hiding place. While small, she will spend much of her time taking refuge from the numerous predators that surround her, choosing her moments to carefully leave the shelter and graze on algal turfs. She may also join a group of other herbivores, forming a mixed species school that forage together and achieve the benefits of safety in numbers. This also allows them to overwhelm territorial damselfish that are defending their algal gardens. When fully grown, our now male adult parrotfish is much less vulnerable. He is able to graze on his own in relative safety and take time to defend his territory and preside over his own harem of females. He is still vulnerable to the biggest predators, however, and must always watch his back. Eventually, the time will come for the parrotfish to take his own harem and spawn, and from there, the life cycle begins again. As you can see, the life cycle of a parrotfish, like many other reef fish, is complex. It relies upon the connectivity of many different habitats, and from open ocean to mangroves to the reef. 
Predator-prey interactions are an important influence throughout the life cycle of fish, affecting not only mortality, but also growth and behavior. Therefore, events that take place in the early life stages of fishes are critical to the fluctuations of fish populations in marine environments.